Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we'll learn how to find the minimum sample size needed when given the confidence level and the maximum allowable margin of error for a confidence interval for a mean. In this problem, we have a market researcher wants to evaluate car insurance savings at a competing company. Based on past studies, he is assuming that the standard deviation of savings is $100. He wants to collect data such that he can get a margin of error of no more than $10 at a 95% confidence level. How large of a sample should he collect? He wants to collect the minimum sample to meet these requirements because collecting more data uh, costs more money. So he's looking for the minimum sample size that will fulfill these requirements. The requirements are a margin of error of no more than $10 and 95% confidence. We saw that when we make a confidence interval for a mean, we're usually using this structure here, using the t-distribution. However, if the standard deviation is known as it is here, assuming that the standard deviation of savings is $100, we can use the z-interval. This is good. We need to know either the standard deviation or be assuming that the sample size is going to be pretty large. Otherwise, we won't know how to find t star from the table because we don't know n. So we wouldn't know the degrees of freedom to look up. So we'll use this structure here with the z interval. And this part, after the plus or minus, is the margin of error. So we want this margin of error to be no more than $10. So we set that piece to be less than or equal to $10. We're putting an upper bound on our margin of error. And now we can plug in the standard deviation which is given to us as $100. We can plug in the Z star for the 95% confidence level. Um, when this is not 95%, we can go to the T table and we can look up our confidence level. Here was 95%. And at row infinity, that's going to correspond to our Z star. So for 95%, we're using a Z star of 1.96. Okay, so we have our Z star. And now we just need to rearrange this and solve for n. So we can multiply both sides by square root of n divide both sides by 10, so we get n on the right side there, and then evaluate the left side, and then we can square both sides, and we get n is greater than or equal to this number here. But we want to make sure we answer the final question, which is how large of a sample should he collect? Because it has to be greater than or equal to this, we always have to round up. So rounding up, we get we should use a sample size n of 385. That's it for this video. For more free resources, you can visit us at openintro.org.